name is Igor Turaev. I am senior software engineer at Dilvin Solutions Company. Also, I am Apache TVM committer. And today I'm going to tell you about boosting machine learning network on specific hardware platform with Apache TVM uh, on the example of Qualcomm Adreno GPU. Uh, here on this slide you can see a plan of today's talk. Uh, let's start from introduction to Apache TVM. Imagine that you have trained your model using one of the frameworks such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, MXNet or something else. After the training you are going to have a, to make a decision to where you want to deploy this uh, trained machine learning model. On the top of the screen you can see a bunch of different hardware platforms. Choosing the best inference and framework to run a model on a target device can be quite tricky. For example, uh, if you want to deploy a TensorFlow Lite model onto an ARM CPU, you are in luck and you can use uh, the TF Lite interpreter and run uh, your model efficiently. Uh, but if you want to deploy your CAFE2 model on an ARM CPU processor, so you are not in luck anymore and it won't be so easy to run your model. CAFE2 doesn't have support for microarchitectures. So which uh, option do you have in this case? First, uh, you can maybe try to find a library that will allow you to deploy the model on your architecture. Second, uh, you can rewrite the model onto TensorFlow Lite. However, uh, this means uh, you would have to train model again. Uh, the last option, uh, you can uh, find some sort of converters that converts uh, the model uh, to a framework that uh, you can uh, use to deploy uh, your model on your hardware. Here you can imagine how many uh, deployment scenarios uh, you should take uh, in your mind to run the model efficient on a new hardware. Thankfully, here is a solution for this uh, deployment problem that is called TVM. TVM is the open source optimization framework for machine learning. It can adjust model uh, from a number of different sources including PyTorch, TensorFlow, ONNX and other and it can uh, target a number of different architectures including x86, uh, ARM, NVIDIA, GPUs, uh, ARM GPUs, etc. It also uh, supported a number of different operating systems including Linux, uh, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Windows and others. TVM has a growing community of more than 820 contributors and 10,000 stars on GitHub. It's uh, graduated at the Apache Software Foundation, uh, that means that it's uh, entirely community-owned. Uh, there is a, a very active discussion forum where anyone can uh, come and ask questions related to TVM. Moreover, uh, there are also regular meetups and conferences related to TVM. Uh, who, are who are the users of Apache TVM? TVM has already uh, had an impact on the industry. For example, every Alexa wake up today across all devices uses a model optimized with TVM. At Facebook, TVM enabled real time on mobile CPUs for free. More than an uh, 85 times speed up uh, for their speech recognition model was achieved by TVM. Uh, at Qualcomm, uh, TVM is used as a key to uh, machine learning access on Hexagon. Also, there are many other software and hardware companies such as Huawei, Intel, Samsung, AMD, ARM and others and uh, they used uh, TVM in their products. One of the problems that TVM is looking to solve is the portability problem, when there are limited hardware options uh, for you to deploy your model to. Uh, you need to be able to rely on a framework that uh, will be able to take your model and uh, target that model uh, to particular hardware. Um, next, uh, TVM is also looking to address the problem of efficiency. Uh, when you need to get as much efficiency out uh, of your target platform as you can. TVM has optimization options that let you optimize the model to target particular hardware. Also, uh, when you need to build and use software stack for your hardware system, TVM gives you the tool to accomplish that. Optimizations uh, which are used in inference engines can be divided into two types. Uh, there are device agnostic and device specific optimizations. Uh, device agnostic optimizations usually happen offline or at model compilation time. Uh, those optimizations include uh, constant folding, patch norm fusion, operations fusion and others. Device specific optimizations can be selected in real time depending on the target device uh, on which the model have to be run. Uh, those optimizations include uh, blocking and splitting the workspace uh, to better util utilization of uh, vector instructions. 
There are several ways uh, to determine uh, which of the device-specific optimizations uh, should be applied to the model to run it efficiently on the target device. For example, engineers can write a heuristic uh, that, based on the data layout or some other criteria, selects uh, the most optimal implementation for efficient execution of the primitive. Um, another approach is based uh, on using a tensor compiler uh, and uh, large search space uh, for the optimal solution. Uh, thus, uh, the compiler finds the most optimal configuration uh, using vectorization or efficient uh, data decomposition in memory uh, for executing primitives on the target device. Let's uh, take a look at TVM architecture. So, let's start from a classical compiler overview. It will help us to understand the idea of TVM. What is the compiler? A compiler is a software technology that takes uh, programs written by humans and turns them into something that computers can understand. On the picture we have a three-phase static compiler. The front-end uh, parses the source code, checks it for error and builds an abstract syntax tree to represent the input code. In the middle, uh, optimizer is responsible for doing a broad fairly, uh, variety of transformations uh, to try to improve the code's running time. The optimizer also independent uh, of uh, the language on the left side and the hardware target on the right. And finally, the backend or code generator maps the code onto the target instruction set. The classical compilers typically work uh, is uh, there are languages that come on the left and the common compiler bridge uh, those uh, different languages into different target hardware. Uh, this architecture allows to support uh, a large number of different programming languages and hardware targets without uh, having to implement general optimizations. Compilers for machine learning uh, do something similar. On the left, uh, the machine learning compiler receives uh, a model in the format of one of the machine learning frameworks as input. Uh, the model is uh, converted to an intermediate representation format uh, and the optimizer applies uh, various optimizations. Next code is generated for different hardware chipset. It might be CPUs, GPUs, and other accelerators like FPGA, DSP, or NPUs. Uh, and uh, that's exactly uh, what uh, TVM is uh, neutral. It breeds different deep learning frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, ONNX, and other uh, to different hardware backends. Uh, TVM performs optimizations at the graph and uh, operation level to ensure that the performance of deep learning model is portable across different hardware platforms. Let's take a look uh, how does TVM work. At the high level, TVM has uh, three bags of tricks uh, that is uh, does uh, to speed up your model. One of them is uh, graph level optimizations. Uh, this essentially writes the data flow graph uh, like the directed cyclical graph uh, of your neural network. Uh, the nodes and edges uh, to simplify the graph and uh, reduce uh, device uh, peak memory usage. The type of graph uh, flow optimization TVM does. It's separation fusion, uh, constant folding, static memory planning, uh, and uh, data layout transformation. In addition, uh, TVM does operator level optimizations, uh, which are more hardware target specific, lower, uh, low level optimizations for individual nodes uh, and operations in the graph. And finally, uh, when you uh, get optimized uh, your model, you run uh, that inefficient uh, TVM runtime. It's a lightweight runtime system that provides a minimal API for loading and executing uh, your optimized model in Python, C++, Rust, Go, Java, and, or JavaScript, for example. On the picture is a general diagram of the internal structure of the TVM. Uh, the main goal of uh, a compiler such as TVM is to use optimizations to speed up uh, the model and run it efficiently on the target device. At the same time, the accuracy of the model should remain at the same level as it was before optimizations. Let's consider this uh, shame uh, in more details. Uh, first, import model. Uh, you import your neural uh, network into the TVM internal format. Relay. Relay is an intermediate representation format in TVM. Relay essentially provides a deep learning framework agnostic way of representing uh, that neural network. That is ideal for further optimizations, both graph and hardware operator level optimizations. Tensor expression. 
uh, in step 3 for every operator or node in your graph we have a corresponding tensor uh, expression we tell us how uh, to implement an operator like matmol or convolution in a hardware agnostic way scheduling uh, the fourth step is scheduling uh, the older version of uh, this was auto tvm the next generation uh, is called uh, auto scheduler and the late la latest generation is meta scheduler uh, this is mostly carried out by automation, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, essentially, the auto scheduling will produce a schedule that optimizes some performance on a given target based on a given description of a TE. Uh, so, TVM uh, defines a search space uh, of possible schedulers uh, to explore and then uh, it uh, searches uh, for the ideal schedule. Tensor expression plus schedule. Uh, the schedule uh, that was found in previous step is applied to a tensor expression to get the final code and uh, a TIR or tensor IR uh, code is generated from it. Tensor IR or TIR. TIR is a low level intermediate representation in TVM. The TIR al already contains the uh, implementation of the operation that uh, will be executed on the target device but the implementation of those operations is still hardware agnostic. And finally, hardware-specific code generation. A hardware-specific code is generated from the uh, received uh, TIR code. Thus, uh, when we compile under the CPU, LVM is used uh, to generate the final code. If it is necessary to run the model on the GPU, uh, when a code generator for OpenCL, CUDA, Metal or some, something else uh, will be used. Let's talk about how we can install TVM on our computer. Um, so there are three possible options. First, it's building from source code, next using Docker container and installing PIP. Uh, we won't consider using uh, TVM and Docker container. It is described in details in the documentation. So please go to the tvm.apache.org if you need more information about running TVM in Docker. Also, during the presentation, I won't take a look uh, in details at the building TVM locally from source code. Uh, but uh, after the presentation, you will have an access to this uh, Jupyter notebook, and you will be able to read about that uh, in details in the Jupyter notebook. Uh, so, let's take a look how we can install TVM via P. Uh, first of all, we need to check available versions for installing. Let's run it. and. Uh, here you can see the error message and uh, it uh, shows us all possible versions which can be installed on the computer. Uh, so on the Linux machine you uh, will be able to install also pre-release packages. Uh, on the Mac OS they are uh, uh, unavailable so I will uh, use TVM which was built uh, from the source code. And now let's uh, check the TVM version. And here it's uh, 0.14. Uh, let's take a look at model compilation with TVM. A detailed description of uh, how uh, you can import the model from various machine learning frameworks uh, can be found on the documentation site. Uh, the, uh, here is uh, the example of uh, interfaces that can be used uh, to load the model from various uh, frameworks. Basically, the uh, interface of the functions is similar. Is similar. Uh, sometimes uh, additional parameters are added for individual importers such as uh, layout that is used uh, in the model or data type. So let's uh, import uh, our model. First of all we have to import some uh, Python modules which will be used and also we have to uh, download and load uh, mobile net uh, model to the ONNX. So uh, after that, we have to prepare inputs for the model. We will download uh, the image of cat and uh, do some pre-processing uh, for the input tensor. On the slide, you can see this cat. So now we can uh, start uh, to import this model to TVM. And uh, first of all, let's uh, uh, use our frontend to import model from Onyx uh, to the TVM intermediate format and uh, let's uh, build the model uh, in the, during the build we specify the optimization level and use function relay build uh, and specify the target uh, for which we are wanted to build our model here we use target lvm to build the model for the cpu 
and also in the bottom of the slide we define the function to evaluate uh, model performance. Uh, here we create the uh, graph uh, module uh, and run it. Uh, to evaluate the performance uh, we use a function which uh, called benchmark. Time of uh, model compilation depends on the size of the model. Uh, small model compiles very fast and huge model can be compiled uh, for a long time. We also need to add a function to check the accuracy of the model. Here we download uh, the uh, file with uh, labels and uh, print uh, the class label and probability of this class uh, to the screen. So now we are ready to, uh, to run our model on CPU and check its output. Let's do that. So we can see that uh, now inference time on the CPU is about uh, 29 milliseconds. And uh, after that, uh, we can check the output of our model and we can see that it's a Tiger Cat, a Tabby Cat, Egyptian Cat, etc. So it looks like uh, our model works correctly. Uh, let's take a look on the running uh, the model on uh, remote device uh, via RPC. Uh, so, first of all, uh, uh, let's uh, talk about cross compilation. Cross compilation is a compilation program for platform with uh, different architecture in comparing uh, with uh, our car current machine and on the screen you can see an example uh, for example on the computer with uh, x86 architecture we need to compile the model for android um, the next uh, technology which is used in this pipeline is rpc or remote procedure call uh, this is uh, commonly used in client server applications uh, and uh, RPC te uh, technology is used uh, when computer program uh, called uh, uh, execution of procedure or sub program in another address space. On the screen you can see uh, an example of such communication between server uh, which is a uh, computer and the client uh, which is Android. Client sends a comment from Android to server uh, there it's executed and uh, the result uh, returns back uh, to the client. The technology of cross-compilation RPC is uh, widely used in uh, TVM. Uh, when it is necessary to run the model on a uh, device, for example Android smartphone. Uh, for running a model on target device it is necessary to have a, uh, a TVM runtime which was uh, compiled for the target platform and RPC server and where they can be used uh, to infer TVM models. Uh, usually on the host uh, TVM RPC tracker uh, is running and uh, RPC tracker is an application uh, which is just responsible for communication between a host and device. To establish RPC connection it is necessary to run RPC tracker on the host machine and uh, after that uh, we can ask uh, RPC tracker state uh, by calling uh, query RPC tracker. I have already run uh, RPC Tracker on uh, my host machine and uh, I have already connected Android device to this tracker so I can uh, check the status and here we can see that I uh, have connected Android device to my machine and it's free. So now we can try to run the model uh, on the remote device on the Android through RPC. First of all we need to import a modulus. Uh, and uh, define the uh, function which uh, will return the, our target device. Uh, usually we shouldn't implement such function but uh, for convenience I did it. First of all let's try to run just on the OpenCL. Uh, next uh, we need to build uh, our model for uh, this target. So it's the same command uh, as it was for uh, CPU. Model was built and uh, now we can uh, connect to the tracker. Uh, after that uh, we can ask tracker to get us a remote device and next uh, we define the function uh, which will return the remote device uh, we use k android uh, next we call this function get remote to get the remote device and uh, now we can check the status of uh, our uh, device in the rpc tracker and here we can see that uh, we have one Android device. Before it was free, but now it's not free. So now it's used uh, for our purposes. We need to define uh, two more functions. First function is export lib, uh, which is responsible for creating a library of our model. Um, and the second function is upload lib, 
uh, it responsible for uploading uh, our uh, compiled library to the device. After that, uh, we can export library and upload it uh, to target device. Let's wait for some time. So the model was exported and uploaded. Uh, continue. Uh, now we can evaluate the performance and check the output of the model. First of all, let's evaluate the performance. So we can see that execution time was about uh, 100 millisecond uh, on the Android device. Uh, and let's uh, check the accuracy of the model and we can see that uh, the accuracy is uh, the same as it was for the CPU device. Uh, so to improve the performance we can use uh, tuning and uh, we use Auto TVM. In this presentation I won't uh, show how I have tuned uh, those models uh, for the target devices but in the Jupyter Notebook you can see the whole uh, source code. Uh, we have to specify the name of log file uh, with uh, tuning statistic uh, for our device. It's uh, mobilenet android openscale.autotvm.log. After that, uh, we can use uh, these performance statistics to compile our model. Uh, also, it will take some time, so let's wait. So the compilation was finished. And uh, now we can export this library to the remote device and evaluate its performance. So exporting this library. So the model was uh, uploaded to the remote device. And now we can evaluate the performance of this model. And next they check the accuracy of this model. We can see that uh, the uh, performance of the model was significantly improved from 100 millisecond to uh, 16 millisecond. And uh, also the accuracy of the model is the same. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the Adrena optimizations and uh, how the, we can boost uh, inference of our model. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to talk about the textures and answer on the question what is the textures and why uh, we have to use the textures. Textures is the memory type uh, representing image uh, with dedicated API for different programming uh, frameworks. Uh, in our case, we use OpenCL. Texture uh, is always blocked. Uh, it has uh, four elements, uh, originally it was for RTPA layout and uh, it's accessing to the element uh, by two coordinates, it's uh, X and Y, uh, in opposite to the 1D flattened buffer access. It is necessary to uh, map the 4D tensor to this uh, 2D structure uh, and uh, sometimes it uh, might be a limitation. Uh, next, uh, answering on the question why we have to use the textures. So let's take a look at the Adrena GPU architecture and uh, we can see that uh, on the textures I use L1 cache and in case of some uh, compute bound uh, kernels then the data can be reused. It is better to load this uh, data to the textures uh, because uh, uh, using textures will help us uh, to reduce uh, uh, latency on the loading uh, data. So let's take a look uh, which TVM components should be extended, modified to enable uh, some hardware capabilities. In our case it's uh, texture support. First of all we have to annotate uh, texture memory scope in graph. After relay uh, we get uh, the representation of our network as a graph and uh, this graph uh, contains some information about uh, the uh, input tensor, output tensors, so we have to uh, modify uh, graph representation and extend it by uh, memory scope uh, information for uh, input and output tensors. Next we have to implement compute functions for operators uh, because textures are always blocked uh, and uh, we have to implement compute functions for block format also for example in case uh, when the input uh, tensor um, cannot be packed to the uh, block format uh, we can um, repack it in the runtime or during the compilation time uh, and uh, after that use benefits of the textures and uh, speed up our model. After implementing compute function we have to implement schedule function. In the schedule function we will describe how we, uh, we should uh, utilize the hardware resources and how we can probably uh, split uh, operation or uh, how it's which loops uh, should be exist uh, in the implementation and how they, ca they should load the uh, hardware target uh, to achieve the uh, better performance. 
On the next step, we have to implement lowering for textures. And uh, that means that uh, we have implemented uh, the functions uh, which uh, will be responsible for uh, flattening textures. That means uh, that write access uh, to the texture element uh, in, the, uh, <coughs> in the program. Also, we have to implement uh, how uh, those textures uh, will be represented in TIR code, uh, introduce new built-in functions, uh, and etc. Finally, uh, we have to extend OpenCL code gen uh, to support new operations. For example, uh, our textures, it's uh, the class image 2D uh, in terms of OpenCL. And also for this uh, uh, data type, we have to introduce new functions for reading image, ri writing image, etc. On this slide, you can see a number of uh, texture optimizations uh, which were implemented during uh, our work on the enabling textures in TVM. It's not the full list, but small part of uh, work which was done. First of all, we enabled pass uh, to pack tensors to texture format. Also forbidding uh, padding fusion into convolutional kernels to avoid conditions uh, inside uh, compute bound kernels. Uh, we did some optimizations and implemented Vinograd algorithm for convolution and it uh, works uh, well for uh, buffers too, but uh, uh, texture support uh, give us additional speed up here. Also, new filtering algorithm was introduced to auto TVM. It helped us to uh, significantly improve uh, tuning time uh, because of uh, reducing search space. The textures were enabled for virtual machine and that allows the user to execute the model with uh, dynamic shapes uh, in TVM and use all benefits of textures. Uh, the performance of uh, virtual machine and graph executor uh, was uh, compared and the performance is the same. If you want to learn more about texture enabling and some technical aspects of this work in TVM, uh, you can take a look at uh, a video from TVMCon. Uh, my colleague uh, Andrei Maloshev uh, presented uh, our work there and uh, his uh, presentation contains more technical details. So, And here is some performance results uh, which we achieved after enabling textures in TVM. Uh, so on this slide you can see uh, six models and uh, uh, for those models we inferred in uh, three different frameworks and with three different precisions and uh, the lower time is the, the better characteristic for those graphics and as you can see uh, the TVM after uh, enabling textures shows uh, very good performance and uh, almost uh, for all cases it shows better uh, performance results in comparison with Xiaomi Maze and TF Lite. Let's try to run the, uh, our model on the Adrena GPU. First of all, we have to uh, configure target for Adrena GPU. We will use our function getTarget uh, with uh, parameter Adrena. And uh, let's uh, build uh, our model to the library. So the model was uh, built and uh, we can continue. Uh, so let's uh, export library and upload it to the remote device. Uh, wait for some time. The model was uploaded to the remote device, so now we can evaluate the performance and the accuracy of the model. We can see that uh, the full schedule for Adrena GPU has uh, better performance in comparison with uh, tuned uh, schedule for OpenCL. For OpenCL we had uh, 16 milliseconds, now we have about 11 milliseconds. And the accuracy of the model uh, is uh, uh, the same as for previous run. And let's try to run our model on the Adrena GPU with tuning statistic. So we have to specify the name of the log file with tuning statistic. It's OpenCL Adrena. And also we have to compile our model with this statistic. The model was compiled and now we can export and upload it to the remote device. And after that uh, we can evaluate uh, the performance of our model and to check its accuracy. You can see that the performance of the model uh, it starts to be much more better, about two times, a bit less than two times, and the accuracy of the model is still uh, correct. On this slide you can see some useful links. Uh, 
so on this slide uh, you can see the link uh, where you can find the Jupyter notebook with this presentation and also this presentation contains many more details which were not covered uh, in this talk uh, this QR code contains the link to the presentation so thank you for your attention I hope it was uh, useful material to you and I'll be glad to answer all your questions.